Okay, great. Biology students, dihybrid crosses are when we look at two traits, not just one. The monohybrid cross was the one trait. If we look here, the only trait that you see in the box is the R trait. So we are going to look at crosses where we can look at not only the R trait, but another trait as well. And show you how that looks. But this is just a review of the monohybrid. It's a monohybrid where you have two hybrids. The top one is a capital R dominant, lowercase r, recessive, and the same thing on the left. When you put those together, you wind up getting that typical outcome where you have one pure capital R, dominant R, one pure lowercase r in the bottom right-hand corner, and then diagonally are the hybrids, the capital R, low, lowercase r, all right? So you have two different outcomes, basically, all the dominant Rs. Let's just say this was for red hair, if R was dominant. So you'd have three of those. And then the two lowercase Rs, um, the recessive trait could be a different color. So the dihybrid cross, you can look, it's a little bit more complicated. Therefore, you need more boxes because there's more outcomes. The dihybrid cross involves studying of the inheritance of two traits simultaneously. Mendel invented the dihybrid cross to determine if different traits such as seed color and seed texture were inherited independently or if they were somehow linked to each other. Okay, so you can see the traits down there. You're looking at whether or not the seed is going to be yellow or green and all or the other trait that they're looking at is whether it's wrinkled or round. So yellow, green, or wrinkled, round. And if you look at the gametes at the top, <clears throat> you are looking at a hybrid. So a pure or a, um, uh, a, a hybrid for each trait. So capital R and lowercase r and a capital um, Y and a lowercase y. And then down the same side, thing down the left hand side. All right, so it's two dihybrids, they call them, all right, where you have one of each particular trait. So dihybrid crosses deal with something known as the law of independent assortment. When gametes are formed, again, during meiosis, the segregation of one gene pair, the Ys, does not affect the segregation of the other gene pair, the Rs. So they don't influence each other. They are inherited independent of each other. Seed shape does not influence the seed color. Therefore, it helps increase variation in population, which we talked about multiple times now. It's very important to the health of a species. And um, you wind up getting some new phenotypes where before we only had, you know, the dominant trait and the lowercase trait. Now we're going to have some new recombinations of the genes to see some different varieties. So one of the things that you're going to be able to need to do is um, the old FOIL method in mathematics. So we are trying to separate the capital R, lowercase r, the capital Y, and the lowercase y, independent of each other in a systematic way so that we can determine, again, the probability of all the different types of offspring. So a pea plant that is heterozygous for rounds, right, has a dominant lowercase trait, and it heterozygous for the yellow seeds, capital Y, lowercase y, if it self fertilizes itself, what exactly would you wind up getting in terms of the offspring? What's the probability of having all round and yellow or something like that? So what do we do? Step one, determine the parental genotypes from the text above. The word heterozygous is the most important clue. And you would also need to understand that self fertilized means you are just going to cross it with itself. So those are the parents, capital R, lowercase r, capital Y, lowercase y, capital R, lowercase r, capital Y, lowercase y. Those are the two parents. Step two, determine the gametes. This might feel a little like the FOIL method you learned in math class. Combine the R's and Y's of each parent to represent the sperm and the egg. So basically, you're just going to distribute the capital R with each Y and the lowercase r with each Y. So the first The first R with each of these Y's, okay? So first of each trait, the outside of each trait, all right? That gives you a capital R, lower, a capital R, capital Y, capital R, lowercase Y. 
that's one set of gametes. The other set, you got to distribute the lowercase r. So now we go with the insides, okay, if you're following the FOIL method, and then the lasts, okay, this r with this y. Okay, so that gives you the lowercase r with a capital Y and lowercase r with the lowercase y. So down here, you can see the gametes, since both parents are the same, it's pretty easy to distribute. All right, so then what do you do? You just go back up to your typical pounded square of 16 boxes and put the gametes right across the top. So here's parent one, capital R, capital Y, capital R, lowercase y, then the lowercase r's with the um, small y and the large y. So do the same thing down the left-hand side and you will see pretty much the similar, um, uh, if you set it up properly, you set similar type of patterns that you saw with the um, monohybrid cross. Okay, so here's another example. Okay, if we take a look at this parent, which is pure for both traits and dominant. Okay, so round and yellow. And this one is wrinkled in green, all right? Pure for the recessive traits, all of their offspring. Will look like this. Okay, you could do that foil method again. But. So now you throw those parents across the top. Is your F2 generation going to be? And here's your typical pattern. Okay, so up here is your pure dominant. Down here is your pure recessive, just like in the mono hybrid. Here's the interesting thing right through the diagonal again is your hybrid for both traits. And then you get those recombinants, the ones that you haven't seen before. Okay. And they're in these three spots, this one, this one, and this one are the same, okay? And all of those are round and green. Well, that's not what either parent looks like. The parents are either round and yellow or wrinkled in green. So that's a new recombination of the traits, increasing variation. And then the other three are right here. That one is wrinkled in yellow, okay? So that's a new recombinant as well. All right, so step four, write down all the possible allele and combinations. So if you write down all the gene, genotypes, there's quite a few, there's not just three. So you gotta write those all down. Count how many you have of each. If you wanted to find the fraction, you could put them over 16. So it's usually a nine to three to three to one ratio. All right, there's some more help if you need it, some examples, and that's it.